Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you how to change the oil on a 2019 and 2020 Yamaha R3. And it should be pretty much the same if you have like a 2018 or older model, because they haven't changed much as far as the motor goes. It's just, uh, I don't know about the fairings on those ones. Um, for this model, you don't have to remove the fairings and it's even easier to get to if you do have a rear stand like this, but you don't have to. Um, you can get to it if, with just the kickstand. But either way, it doesn't take a long time. It, you only need a few tools and it's something worth knowing how to do if you haven't changed the oil on one of these before. So I'm gonna show you all the steps, everything you need, and just kind of guide you through it. If you wanna know how to do this, just keep watching and I'll show you what to do. Okay, first thing you're gonna need is just a socket wrench with a, it's gonna be a 12 millimeter. So you'll just need a 12 millimeter um, socket and you can get a longer one like this, but you don't have to have one like that. And then of course you are gonna need an actual oil filter. So I'm just using the OEM ones. I'll have that linked below to where you can find these for probably the best price that I found it. You can, this is kind of optional, but you can get a crush washer as well. I think it's worth swapping out if it's been a while. These are usually only about a dollar or two. So it's good to just have some of these on hand if you're planning on doing a few oil changes anyway. And then of course you'll need some oil. I am using uh, what Yamaha recommends, which is Yamaha Yamalube and it's 10W40 and it's just the performance all-purpose one. I'll also have this link below. I found a pretty good price on this. And then last but not least, you need some sort of drain pan. This is one I just picked up at like an AutoZone store. Um, you don't have to have one this big. I do oil changes in my car, which is a pretty big car. So I just have one of these on hand too, but somewhere for the old oil to drain into. So you just need something like this. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is just get the motorcycle warmed up. I've already done that, um, but just let it run for like a minute or two and just kind of let the oil get a little bit warmed up so it'll be easier to come out. So once you do that, just go ahead and move your drain pan under the bike. So you just slide it under there and then just make sure all the stuff is open for it. Okay, so I am over here on the left side of the bike and um, I'm gonna zoom in as best as I can. The fairings are in the way, but I don't need to take them off to do the oil change. So I'm just gonna show you from this angle, but right in here, right next to the exhaust headers is gonna be the old oil filter. So you wanna take that off first and hopefully it'll be easy for you and you can just twist it off. Sometimes that's not the case and you have to use an oil filter wrench. So I'm gonna see with mine if I can just uh, twist it off here. Yeah, and so mine's actually not turning. So I will have to get an oil filter wrench. I'll show you where to get one of those as well, just to kind of loosen it up a little bit and then uh, you can put on the new one, but let me get that taken off first. So if you don't have a filter wrench, you could use a uh, pair of like really large pliers if you have that, which is something I had to use because the filter wrench I have doesn't fit. Uh, but I'll link in the description below the one for Yamaha. But basically once you get it loose enough, you wanna put the pin back under there and then just start loosening up. And once it's loose enough, you can reach in from here instead of having to do it from the bottom. So I have some already coming out. I'm just gonna let that drain a little bit. And then once a good amount has come out, you can just kind of slide it off here. Kind of fall out. And while we're waiting on that to drain out, I'm gonna show you what to do with the new filter, if you don't already know this. So usually it has some sort of film on it. Of course, you wanna remove that. And then get out your oil. And then what you wanna do is get some out from in here. So you can just kind of dip your finger in there if you want. And then just put it right around the gasket of the uh, oil filter. Some people will fill their oil filter as well. I don't really bother with that too much. Uh, but yeah, just get a good amount going around the, around the outside here. Of course, this is better if you have gloves. Uh, all of my stores around me are sold out of gloves right now due to COVID-19, so. Yeah, so once you get a good amount of coat on here, that's when you can go ahead and put it back on. Of course, once everything's kind of uh, drained out for the filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back on. And another thing you can do as well, if this is pretty dirty, you can go ahead and clean that off. Um, mine is pretty clean and the oil is not very old. This thing only has like 600 something miles on it. I'm just doing the very first um, oil change after that engine break in. So um, that's a good time to go ahead and clean it up if you need to before putting on the new filter. But obviously this is pretty straightforward. You just put the new one on, make sure it threads good before you start really cranking down on it. And then once you get to the point where it's doing that, where you feel, a, you feel it kind of make contact with the uh, case there, you want to move your oil pan because you need to get under there. And uh, preferably if you have an oil filter wrench, you want to do this and tighten it to the exact specifications, which is 15 to 20 Newton meters. Um, but what I usually do is once it gets tightened up, I do about a half turn just to make sure the gasket's really on there. And that should be good enough because once it heats up, 
it's going to apply even more of a seal. Um, but yeah, if you want to go full the, the correct route, uh, once again, I'll have that linked in the description below, but you want to put an oil filter wrench on here and then torque it to specs, which is 15 to 20 newton meters. All right, and this is about the best angle I could find to show you guys, but basically the uh, bolt is going to be right here. And this is also on the left side, right next to that filter that you just worked on. So you'll have a 12 millimeter that you want to get on there. And once you crack it loose, that's a good time to go ahead and put the drain pan right back under there. You're kind of blocking the view here. And then you basically just loosen this up. And then you'll just want to let this drain out for a while. And if your bolt drops, go ahead and grab that before it gets lost. While it's draining out, this is a good time to check the oil as it's coming down. So you'll just kind of want to look through it and make sure you don't see a bunch of metal flakes or like a milky color to it. That usually indicates some other problems going on. Okay, and while we're waiting on that, um, go ahead. If you're changing out the crush washer, you want to grab the bolt. And it's a little hard to see there, but you can kind of work it with your finger, fingernail to get it all the way through. It looks like this one has to be threaded off. You can't just loosely take it off. Okay, and I got the new one on. The new one is a little bit thicker, and I suppose that's gonna be because once I actually torque it down, it's gonna flatten out since it's just a thin piece of metal. Um, so it'll be flattened like the other one. So don't be too concerned if it looks a lot wider, um, the washer compared to the other one. And that's because it is a, what they call a crush washer. So it does get crushed and it goes flat to help seal that up. So it should look like this and that's okay. So once you get this ready uh, and the oil's done draining, then you're ready to go ahead and put this back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt back on. And you'll just wanna hand tighten this on first. Don't start cranking at it with a uh, socket yet. Once you get it threaded, you can go ahead and move your pan out of the way to clear some more room. Once you have it uh, tightened up enough there, that's when you're gonna to wanna to get your torque wrench out. Go ahead and torque it to specs, which is about 20 Newton meters. And then you'll just wanna crank on it until it starts clicking. All right, and then you're gonna to wanna to remove the oil filter cap, which is right here. Nice and easy to get to. And then preferably uh, have like a longer funnel like this so you can get to it without all the stuff dripping on your fairings. Go ahead and insert that in there. And then you're just gonna start filling it up with oil. In this case, usually you wanna have, it, has, it varies depending on what, if you're doing like an oil filter and stuff like that. So it's somewhere around two quarts. But the thing that makes it easy is there's gonna be an oil fill guide right here and you'll be able to check that when you're filling it up, but usually somewhere around two quarts. So just make sure you have at least that much on hand and you're gonna keep an eye on that as soon as you start seeing that fill up. I'll show you more about that here in a second. So right on here on the right side of the bike, you can see this guide right here. This shows you how much oil you'll have in here. So um, when you're filling in your oil, you'll want to make sure first, before you even run it, it goes past the bottom line right here. I like to have it somewhere around in the middle. So once you start filling in the oil, make sure it fills up to right about in the middle and this is where um, I like to run the motor, let the oil circulate through a little bit, and then I'll kind of top it off and get it all the way up to that top line, somewhere around that same area. Once that's done, you are basically finished. Of course, check for oil leaks and things like that. And that's it for changing the oil on your 2019 or 2020 Yamaha R3. Pretty straightforward, you don't need a whole lot of tools. It's just important that you're careful with uh, torquing down the bolt and of course oil cleanup and stuff like that and putting the right amount in there. Uh, but that's everything you need. I'm gonna be doing um, some more actual mods to this next. I just wanna get the main thing done, get the engine broken in. So I'm gonna have some more videos on that. Stay tuned for some of that stuff and I'll see you guys on the next one.